case you're new to my YouTube channel or you just stumbled across this video or you just don't know, I am indeed running a Hackintosh right now. It just looks like a regular Mac, an OS X machine, like a Mac Pro or an iMac or a MacBook or something. But it is indeed, in fact, a computer I built myself, ordered all the parts, and I have it running OS X. You can view all my unboxings on my channel. They're all there. You could, you know, just do, you can see the specs I have. So this is going to be a video, was it worth it? I've had my Hackintosh for about three months, a little more. And overall, I absolutely love it. I will never go back to just buying a PC from Walmart. I will never do that. So this video, like I said, will just kind of be, is it worth it? I'm going to give some pros. I'm going to give some cons. And at the end, I'm just going to tell you straight up whether or not I think it's worth it. So the first topic I want to talk about is performance, um, overall speed, you know, stuff like that. So first, I want to show you the specs I have. So rather than watch my unboxing videos, I'll just come into about this Mac, and I'll show you the things people mostly want to see. I'm running a 3.6 GHz Core i7. It's a Core i7-930. Its stock speed is, is uh, 2.8, 2 I believe, 2.83 GHz, but I have it overclocked to 3.61 thanks to my beast of a CPU cooler. And I also have 12 gigs of memory. If you look back through my videos, I did a um, Hackintosh stress test, and that was with 2.8 GHz clock and 6 gigs of RAM. So since then I've, I've upgraded, I've increased speed, stuff like that. So I will have to do an updated um, stress test video. But to the point of this video, I just want to talk about the performance I get. This thing is fast. And when I say fast, it's very fast. You know, I can be doing lots of different things all at once. The things I do do get done very fast. <laughs> I said do do. But um, for example, I'm, I'm installing Windows 98 up here to a virtual machine. You might be asking why. Basically, it's just to play some old games I have laying around. You know, Day of the Tentacle, Nickelodeon, like Director Studio, or whatever. They're just classic games that they just you just gotta have. So um, they don't work on Windows 7. I do have Windows 7 installed. You can watch my parallels videos and annotation. Go ahead and click that. But so as you can see here, I have this installing, and even down in my dock, you know, I have um, corkboard running, which is kind of like a clipboard type of deal. You have Dropler. This is um, this up here. But all these separate applications down here, the ones that have the dots, are all running. And you, uh, and with Windows 98 installing to the virtual machine. I'm, I'm using about 20% of my whole computer, you know, and have to have all that stuff going, it, it's just awesome, you know, and there's no slowdown at all, I can still do dashboard, expose, like everything like that, it all still works perfectly, and there's no slowdown at all, so I do get very good performance, and as I mentioned earlier, I do get great multitasking, you know, I could, like I said, I could be having parallels, for instance, say I have Windows 7 booted up here, and I use a video converter within Windows because I still can't find a very decent one for OS X. So I could have Final Cut up here, I could be importing my intro or doing all this other stuff. While I'm doing that, I could be having my video be converting from .wma to a .mov for easier editing in Final Cut. And by the time I'm done doing what I need to in Final Cut, that's already done converting and I can just drag it right in. So the editing and everything, just overall multitasking is just outstanding on this machine. So even if it's not like a legit Apple computer, like I'll get into more of this later, but make sure your specs are right and you will have a beast of a machine. Also by running OS X, I get access to a lot of great applications such as Final Cut down here, you got GarageBand, you know, just all these other applications in here. You know, even just the Mac App Store with the unlimited possibilities of this, you know, it's basically an iPhone for your desktop. You know, and they even have like games like Call of Duty in here now. They have, and it's only going to get more advanced. So really, the the limit is endless. You know, that's probably one of the best features about ha having a Hackintosh is running OS 10, obviously. And you know, just the apps you have access to. It's just if you like, if you guys notice, if you go back to my older videos, probably from like five, six months ago, they're all 480p. They're you know they're not good editing. But now that I have access to all this great software, you know, it just makes everything a lot better production quality with not much more work. So once you get past the learning curve of Final Cut and stuff like that, you can do some really cool stuff with just a few clicks. And really there's nothing like that for Windows, you know. That's one thing. I'm I'm not gonna sit here and like try to say that they're like to deter you guys from using Windows, but I can't recommend OS ten enough. You know, it just it's it just delivers so much. But I'll get into all that other stuff in other videos and everything like that. So let's go ahead and move on. The next thing I want to talk about is stability. Now, stability is pretty much you know if I boot up my computer, how long will it run for without issues? You know, stuff like that. Will it do this? Will it kernel panic and everything like that? Overall, I give it a very good score. If there's a reliability scale here, and it's out of ten, I'd give it like an eight point five. 
There are a few things that I'll talk about when I get to the cons section of this video, but overall, it definitely has some great reliability. You know, I can boot it up and you know have it converting a video while I'm at school, and I can come home and have you know the video be done and downloads or anything like that. You know, it really just does do a great job. It it's about as reliable as a typical Windows system. I wouldn't say it's much less. So now moving on to the next pro, which is probably what most people look for when buying a Mac is price. So if you like, if you saw my specs earlier, I have about the specs of the baseline quad core Mac Pro. You know, I have a quad core processor. It's not really a Xeon, but you know, a 3.6 gigahertz Core i7 and a Xeon, they're pretty close together. And mine's at a higher clock speed than the Xeon. So the Xeon is more of a workstation chip. You know, it's meant to be on for extended periods of time, whereas the, the i7 is more of a consumer chip. But they still, the i7 is still right up there in performance. You know, like, even just the multitasking and everything, like, it's just, it's going great. So I, at about half the price of the Mac Pro, I have a system that, you know, and let's let's go to Apple's site real quick. So I'll go ahead and open up Safari. We'll go ahead and go, we'll go to Apple. We'll go to Store. And we'll go to Mac Pro. So these start at twenty five hundred. So we'll go ahead and we'll select the baseline. Try to zoom in here. So as you can see, this is going to be a two point eight gigahertz. That's what mine is too. I'm not sure if you can really overclock Max. I honestly have no idea. I've never used a Mac Pro. I'm not sure if they have like a BIOS you can go into or anything, but this only comes with three gigabytes of RAM, and it doesn't say the clock speed of the RAM, but I assume it's like 1600, maybe 1333, which is what mine is. Mine's 1333, but you know I have four times the amount of RAM. You know I have 12 gigs of RAM, and you know I'm not gonna put aside the hard drives. This does have a better video card than what I'm running. This card's probably like twice as good, but um, yeah, the Magic Mouse trackpad, you know. I got both of those. I have the Apple keyboard. Um, I don't have a warranty, which I, this is part, all part of the cons. Like this could be can go both ways. I'll get into the cons at the near the end of this video. But you know, as you can see here with the 12 gigs of RAM and this processor, I'm already up to over three and a half grand. You know, and as a college student, just as someone that doesn't have a full time job, there's no way I'd ever be able to afford this. I'd have to like mortgage everything I own to be able to afford this. You know, and it's not like on my computer all I do is go on the internet or you know check email and do instant messaging and everything you know I do YouTube videos I'm I'm editing high definition video you know I do audio not really like not necessarily instruments and stuff but I do like try to play with garage band and stuff like that so really if I were to get like a Mac mini or something it would be a great machine but it's just not the power I need and that's like you know seven hundred dollars so when it comes to Hackintoshes I'd say the top reason people do it me included is price. You know, if I had, I'm not saying this is not worth it because it definitely is. You know, you get the Apple quality and like, well, again, I'll get into a lot of this stuff later. But for two thousand five hundred dollars, I could build a system for half of that. You know, and still have roughly pretty good, you know, the same performance. So, price is probably the most demanding factor of a Hackintosh. And not only that, but if you go ahead and build your own system, you can build. You know, you can buy part by part by part. You know, if you can only get paid so much, instead of having to save up for months, you could just buy one thing at a time. On this paycheck, I'll buy a hard drive. On this paycheck, you know, this paycheck and the next, I'll buy the motherboard. You know, instead, you could split it up, and over time, you could accumulate all your parts. So that's also another very good advantage is you have more choice on how much you want to spend and when you want to spend it. Which sort of leads me into my last pro is choice. Not only do you have you know the choice of the operating system, but you have more of a choice on your parts that you buy. So for for example, um, if you buy a Mac Pro, the only processor you can have is a Xeon, and that's it. But if I have my Hackintosh here right now, like I said, I have the Intel Core i7 930. If the 980X, the six core processor, came down five hundred dollars, say that'd be a godsend but if it actually became like that affordable I could sell this processor and buy that one and throw it in there no problems so you can upgrade your parts a lot more you know you could choose you know whatever graphics card you want not all graphics cards will work in a Mac Pro so there's also texts out there which are basically drivers for OS 10 that people hack that get their hardware to work you know there's DSDT for your motherboard and everything like that which I'm not gonna get into because you know it's 
different stuff. You can look into it if you want to do build a Hackintosh. <laughs> but basically, you have choice of what you want to buy. You know, you can choose whatever case you want. You could choose whatever CD drive you want to whatever hard drive. You know, so the the possibilities are really limitless. PC hardware isn't bad hardware. That's pretty much all Apple uses really, but it's just custom meant for OS 10. But you know, you just get a lot more choice. You know, you could, like I said, you could you could hook two graphics cards together. You and you have more of a variety doing that, so you have a lot more customization. So it's also easier to upgrade and everything like that. And this is great for people that don't like Apple's offerings. For example, I'll go back to Apple's page. You know, there there's only well, I'll, I'll say three desktops. You know, putting all the MacBooks aside, you know, you don't want a Mac Pro or, or a MacBook Pro. You don't want a MacBook. You want like a designated desktop for like for let's say for YouTube editing for Final Cut that you can really multitask with. The Mac Mini really won't do it. I mean, it only has a Core 2 Duo in it, which really isn't, it's not a bad chip, but it's getting dated. So, especially when you have programs down here like Adobe Premiere that are multi-threaded compatible, Final Cut isn't, I really hope the next version is. But anyway, moving on, you know, you want to be able to use as many cores as you can. That just shaves so much time off your export time. So, really you're down, you're limited to the iMac, which you can't upgrade. The only thing you can upgrade in the iMac is the memory, the RAM. But if you want to upgrade, you know, the hard drive or the processor, you just can't do it. So, that really leads you to the Mac Pro. You know, what if you want to record from your camera right into your computer? Through HDMI, you need an HDMI capture card because the iMac doesn't have HDMI. So, that means that the only option that Apple has for really professional users is the Mac Pro, and it's just so expensive. And like I said earlier, I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm just saying that for someone that's my age that has the income I have, it's just, there's no way. So Apple kind of limits its consumers. I really wish they would have something in between these. Maybe throw like an i7 in there, but don't have it be an all-in-one iMac. You know, just have it be a tower instead. You know, have it like a Mac amateur. It's my attempt at humor. It's awful. But anyway, that's what I think Apple should do. Maybe hopefully like next this year next year they can really have more of a not professional but also not like Mac mini something that's in between that really YouTube like guys like me people that do a lot of video editing you know audio work and everything like that do some gaming here and there so hopefully they have something that could fit that need now moving on to the next part of this video is cons so I've, I've given you the four main pros you know the performance the stability price and choice now the two cons the first one I have is stability now I, I know I said that was a good thing but like mentioned in, in the video earlier like there are some days where it can act up you know sometimes I'll be converting a video or something and as soon as it's done it says it's done but the whole system just locks up and you're forced to restart you know and sometimes the video doesn't finish converting or even sometimes I'll just you know come into finder open up a window I'll go to click this and it's a done deal my system just freezes or sometimes, not all the time, you know, not very often at all, but I'll wake up to like a kernel panic and I'll, the first thing I'll have to do for the day is restart my computer. So it is at times unstable, but I think pretty much every computer is. Every computer has its days. So that's why earlier I gave it an 8.5 out of 10 because like I said, it does have its days, but you know, for a hacked operating system, you know, it's not really a hacked operating system, it's just hacked things getting the operating system to run. You know, sometimes there's just some bugs. That's pretty much all it is. They're just little bugs, but they're, it's really nothing that bad. You know, my system still runs perfect, you know, like maybe not perfect from what I just said, but pretty close. It's the next best thing to a real Mac. So stability is a minor con here, but still overall a pro. And the last con, and I only have two here, is even though, you know, this is a great machine, I don't regret it at all. I absolutely love this thing. It's still not Apple. I mean, if you look at this Mac Pro, let's go into let's see gallery and we'll go we'll have a look at the inside of the case I mean look at that you don't see one single wire except maybe like these over here that's it you know the inside it's just Apple engineering you know if you look in my inside my case it's just wires it's like spaghetti in there and it's just you know it's you can tell that I built it <laughs> I'm not and not some Apple engineer so not only that, but I mean, this case is just aluminum. It just looks so professional. You know, it has the handles that help really carry it and stuff like that. So it's it's just not Apple quality. And even on the software, you know, I'm sure Mac Pros rarely ever see a kernel panic. You know, it happens on every system. Every OS X system will get a kernel panic here or there. But I guarantee mine does it, you know, three times as often. 
which still isn't very often, but you get what I'm saying. It's just not really Apple quality. And not only that, you don't have any support. You know, if you buy a Mac Pro, chances are you're going to have Apple Care, which covers everything bumper to bumper, if whether it's your processor going out or your SATA cable blowing up in half. I don't know. But everything is covered. So my computer, I do have like individual warranties, but those are only for a year. And, you know, I have to ship that one part back instead of, you know, the whole computer, and I can't really use it anyway. So that is kind of an annoyance, you know, if something goes out, it's your responsibility to take care of it, you know, you have to handle it, you have to go buy a new graphics card if yours gives out, it's not covered by anything. If it goes out, if you have a one year warranty on it, and it goes out one year and two months, you're out of luck. So that's pretty much it for cons. So as you can see, the pros definitely outweigh the cons, but one thing I have to stress very much so is to do your research. You know, I didn't just go on a new way, click this, 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 and check out. Not even close. I spent hours researching all these parts, making sure that the i7-930 would work with this motherboard, making sure it would work with OS X, making sure OS X could recognize my graphics card, making sure OS X could run these hard drives. I mean, and I mean everything I looked at, you know, very specifically. And, you know, I have I probably still have it here. Hold on, I'll go to Backup, Documents other stuff Hackintosh parts you know like I have links to everything I bought you know I, I was very organized I didn't just you know think this computer up overnight and order the parts the next day you know I spent months looking at all like probably two months or so looking at all these parts reading up on forums making sure you could get it to boot right everything you could possibly think of I looked into for this computer and because of it I got a great result you know like it's just it's next it's basically a Mac Pro you know, I rarely have issues with it. It does everything I ask it to do. Everything I throw at this thing, it can handle. It's just, it's a great system, but you have to do your research. Don't go out just thinking that you could just take your dad's old computer and put OS 10 on it, because not only will you have a crappy experience, it probably won't, you know, it'll have bugs in it, you know. Older graphics cards really don't work that well, you know, just stuff like that. So make, if you're gonna do this, at least make sure you do your research, put the time into research, and you will get a great result. And Probably the best thing is that, you know, you don't have to build a powerful system like mine. You don't have to spend $1,200. You could spend $500 and get, like, a dual-core processor, or you could spend $800 and get, like, a Core i5, or you could spend this and get an i7, or you could spend five grand and build the best system ever. It's really up to you, you know. And at this point, you know, there's great, like, use very useful resources out there. Like, I'll, I have a link to a site down there that I personally use, and it, they just have answers to everything. These are brilliant people that really know what they're doing. So there's, of all the guides they have out there, and just everything, you know, it's really not as hard as it seems. So if you are more, really want to do this, but you're scared to, just, you know, broaden your horizons, learn a little bit more about, you know, about computers in general, if you're interested in this kind of thing. But if not, it's just a fun experiment, really. If you don't really want to use OS X and you're just bored one day, it's, it could be a fun experiment. Just make sure you back up your stuff. But overall, at the end of the day, I highly recommend building a Hackintosh. If you really want to get into you know video production, there are Windows programs, but I just have to be honest, they, they just don't compare to the OS X applications. There's anything like GarageBand just doesn't run as smooth. Anything like Final Cut just doesn't run as smooth. You know, there's just more features, more possibilities. So that's what I think. You know, if OS X has given me access to great hardware. I don't have to run virus scans all the time. I don't have to worry about basically anything in terms of viruses or, you know, there's like I said, there's the occasional kernel panic, but it's better than the weekly blue screen. That's all pretty much it for this video. So if you have any questions, I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. You can also check out itechcity.org. This video will be posted there. Leave your comments. Please give a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. If you're thinking about doing this, I'll be glad to help you. Um, if you have done this, tell me your experience. Tell me what you think. List your specs. Be pretty cool to look at those. I like reading over people's specs. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.